Hello and welcome to this episode for Electric Pages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here in Nuremberg 2025 from Embedded World and it's been an absolutely fantastic event. Now you saw one of our videos for Electromaker on the Breadbits Hire and it is an absolutely fantastic product. And guess what? They're releasing a second version and I'm here with my very good friend. Thank you for having us today. Nice to meet you. So Thank just you. before we dive into this video and you're going to show us what's new about the Gen 2, just tell the audience who you are, what you do and yeah. what you like to do in your free time. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm Nick. I'm with the Red Pita team for six years, and I'm the technical sales manager here. We are uh, really proud to launch today the Generation 2 Red Pita, a long due update. So we took all the best things from our flagship that was uh, reviewed not too long ago, and we made it even better. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. So I can invite you here to the demo, and we can talk a little bit about the Absolutely. Let's do that. So here we have the uh, traditional 14-bit boards with uh, different accessories. Here we have uh, also a new product for us, which is the four-channel input. But the start of today's show is the Generation 2 Red Pitaya. Uh, this has a couple of improvements, like for instance, the front end here has been redesigned with new filters, uh, which will uh, allow the users to have much better noise performance less crosstalk between the channels when they do the measurements and uh, of course less signal distortions because of the new redesigned filters. In the back here we have new connectors not only for the daisy chaining so when people want more than two channel in and two channel out. Oh you switched to USB-C. Yes yes finally. This is <laughs> finally. <laughs> a, uh, very requested from the industry engineers yep. uh, side. And we finally switched to, to this. Actually, that's a good question. Company. I'm quite surprised that engineers would, would ask for a USB-C over oh, a yes. SATA. Because personally, I think I would have gone for a SATA, but I'm surprised they've asked for a USB-C. No, actually, uh, no, this was uh, like a really requested because it's much easier to find cables for USB oh, Type-C these days. That's true, yeah. And uh, all the power supplies are slowly like moving out, like phones, tablets, like everything, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, one additional reason why we uh, should change or everybody should change is that these connectors are very hard to get nowadays, so it's almost impossible to get them. Yeah. No. So for production, this is very important. Seriously, yes. they're, they're hard to get these days. Yes, yes, they are like... Yeah becoming obsolete. Does that, does that not make you feel a bit old like me? Because well, I thought we, well, that was our connector in our generation, I no, suppose. <laughs> I'm, I feel pretty good. I, I'm pretty sure it's not us, right? It's just how life is for some components. Yeah, everything is just rolling out faster this days. Fair enough. And not only these two connectors, on the back you have another three additional USB type C's. For, oh, excellent. For power, for serial console, and also you notice the USB host it's gone now because yeah. it's a USB type C now. And again, that's much more convenient for modern hardware. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, for finding cables of different yeah. lengths and, and also for the bandwidth, it's, it's a little Now, I, I love how you mentioned that you've got a new filter to improve the, anal uh, the analog sort of front end, despite the fact that the, the repetized analog front end is already really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that you're making it even better is only going to help engineers that much more. Yeah, so, yeah. so with these new analog front end uh, with, the, with the new filters, what would you say that engineers can now do that they couldn't do before? Well, it's not really like that. They can do whatever they were able to do before. Now yeah. they can do it even better. But uh, uh, let's say 10% of the customers that were really pushing the envelope, that yeah. were doing really uh, small signal measurements, they yeah. will be able to do them much more. And, and I'm guessing and would these customers tend to be in like laboratory environments, industrial environments, that sort of thing. Okay, so what we noticed so far, uh, the engineers that wanted this little bit better performance came from uh, laser laboratories, photonics industry, from that quantum that computing, makes sense. from yeah. uh, radar uh, developers. Yeah. So kind of this more industrial. They, they have but, really, really like yes, narrow yes. margins of error yeah. and they've got to make sure they can get every bit yeah, of resolution yeah, out yeah, of their devices. Yeah. And uh, to save the best for the last, we now have an additional connector here in the back. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we will uh, also sell a module, so a tiny little PCB that fits in this area here, that plugs onto this new connector. And with that the new add-on module, people will be able to boot the Red Pita from eMMC memory now. Yeah, it's a bit faster, oh. a bit more reliable in oh, terms that's of much better, vibrations. Yeah. 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 And also there will be a controller on that board that um, can be like a hardware watchdog for the Red Pita. So oh. if somebody writes a script that freezes up because of, I don't know, some new conditions, 
uh, that hardware it's board will be able you to, to figure out and restart the, the Redmi Tai board. And, and, I can, and, and I understand that might be important because the Reptai, as we saw in the, in the previous video, it's a network device. It's something that you can push You can push your own software to. And of course, anything that you can put your own software yeah. onto means yeah. you can crash it through your own programming. And Definitely. so you need to make sure you can recover from that. And you can imagine for some application where people install it somewhere very remote, mm. It's not easy to send some engineer to the <laughs> can you just go, or, yeah. Can yeah. you go to the middle of the desert where my thing's on an oil yeah. pipeline? Can yeah, you just yeah. reset it, please? Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes Can't do it's, it. it's not Can't possible. Do it. And uh, also, we will be sharing the schematics for this add-on module so people can make their own add-on module. Is that, sorry, sorry, the, uh, the add-on the, the add yes. little board? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Because uh, on this connector, we also have 16 digital pins that are Excellent. very high speed. So it's uh, like um, eight pairs of differential inputs. Uh, not inputs, inputs and outputs, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is a really high speed bus directly to the FPGA. It's like a one gigabit bandwidth, you know? Which is different to the GPIO that you have. Yes, yeah. yes. So you can do your fast data acquisition, you can do signal processing in the FPGA. And if you really want to get a lot of data out quickly, yeah. you can use and, that and bus. I, and I, I can imagine that that type of connector could be useful for things like, let, let's say like you've got a laser infrometer, I can't pronounce it, the, yes. uh, you know what I mean? And you're yeah. trying to control motors and you're trying to tr tr trying to find the actual distance. The high speed bus can give you that high, uh, yeah. high digital interface, which maybe GPIO usually couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, one last update, it was always a little bit of a hassle for those uh, users that wanted to use external clock with the Red Pita, right? Yes, because yes. Maybe they have more stable clock. Uh, like we sell the normal boards which use the internal clock and we also sell the boards that are using the external clock. But yeah. it's not very easy to switch between them, right? No, you no. can to modify a little bit the, the hardware. Well, now it's uh, just a matter of pulling up or down a pin on the extension connector. Oh, that's and brilliant. The so this is much nicer way and, to do it. Yeah. But, but what I really love about this is the fact that you talk about improvements that you made in your, in your new second yeah. version, but it makes you realize how how cutting edge and, and, and how sort of the, the high speed nature, yeah. the, 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 the capabilities of the device, because even like I say, even before, these things are really, really powerful. And for yeah. you to make these new improvements, oh, yeah. honestly, I wouldn't even know what to do with all these yeah. new capabilities. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, the Gen 2 Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, we are launching actually three models, yeah, three yeah. variants. One will be the most affordable one for the people that actually don't need to daisy chain it yeah. or they don't need to use external clock. That's like the majority, let's say. However, uh, closing the gap to the, let's say, half of them, uh, which will be needing, they will have this pro version that it's in the middle of the range. And we also have a top of the range, which is uh, the board with all the features, double the memory and with a bigger FPGA we will have the Zinc 7020. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and do you know how many, so like, how many gates that, that the, the new Xilinx has? I don't remember the number of gates, but I remember that the 7020, it's actually three times more logic gates compared to the normal Oh, so, so, so you're going to get three times more logic capability yes. than, oh, yeah. right, yeah. so it's a lot. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, so it's a massive amount. So um, are these currently in production or are they just about to be released? So we are at the point now where we did all the tests in-house. Yeah. Good. However, these are the only two boards that we have The only two working. boards. Working. Hence why it's in a glass case. So uh, the next step for us is to send the first batch, like uh, 20, 30 units to the beta testers. And yeah. yeah, probably in a month. Uh, I hope not more. Fingers crossed. We, we should have the, the launch in the web shop. Yeah. Fantastic. So there's one more demonstration I can see right here on a gigantic touchscreen. Do you want to show us what's going on? Yes, yes. So here we are uh, simply generating some signals uh, with uh, Red Pitaya board and we are receiving with a four channel input. And uh, yeah, this is the normal oscilloscope application. Yep. However, yeah, you can also use it as a spectrum analyzer. Yep. Logic analyzer, signal generator. Yeah. Again, we and that's something we covered in that Electromaker yeah. Maker video where we saw all the different tools yeah. you could use, and you can create your own tools as well. Oh yes, yes. Yep. So this is really great that people have access to Python interface right in yep. the inter in the web server because they don't need to have Python installed on the computer. The world's best programming language. Carry on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a good addition. <laughs> it's, it's picked up very fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, also. In this interface, because we are hosting it on the 
on the board itself, yep. people have direct access to examples, like how to yep. trigger, how to yep. acquire data, how to generate signals. So what ends up happening, and this is very quick to do for the customers, they just modify the examples. Yeah, fantastic. So my final question to you is for the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Reptile Solutions, including the new generation, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, well, everything is on our website. We are already working on the documentation, so everything will be public there. If anybody has any questions, we are uh, uh, guarding the tower all the time. Yeah. And also, uh, I don't know if many people noticed, we launched a new uh, AI assistant, Bob, oh. which, is, which is trained with uh, all the communication that we previously had with the customer. So, People can come to, to this AI chatbot that's uh, named Bob and ask him even coding questions. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's like pretty pretty good one out there. I, I try to test it as much as possible. <laughs> and uh, we try, try to, to, try to it. break it as much as possible. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, I, I think people will have lots of fun with uh, our new Bob. It's, it's kind of a funny guy, but uh, he will get the job done. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much for taking time to see us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. much.